Hey there folks, I'm Dan Brown from Sort of Interesting and after an awful lot of requests I have finally, finally got around to doing this video my general advice and tips for first time boat buyers Now I get an awful lot of requests for just general tips on buying your first boat but I would like to say right now that I am absolutely no expert on boating or boats or the structure of boats inside or out and these are just a few bits of advice and tips that I certainly wish that I'd have had 10 months ago when I was looking at boats and ended up buying good old Tilly here. Um, so, I was intending to do a lot of filming for this video outdoors, but... As you can see, it's extremely windy! So, instead, I will do most of the filming inside and, well, you can probably hear the wind out there and I hope it doesn't interfere too much with the recording but instead of looking at my ugly mug, I'll point the camera out of the window so you can enjoy some scenery. Now, the first and most important thing on my list when I was looking at buying a boat was the condition of the hull. Now, obviously, to me at least, it's very, very important that the boat you buy has got a very sound hull that you know isn't going to suddenly spring a leak. And, well, touch wood, Tilly hasn't so far. Um, and basically, when I was looking at boats, with my price range being 10 to 15 grand, I was looking at a lot of older boats like Tilly here that are two, maybe three decades old. So you can imagine on boats like that, that have been sat in the water for that long, there's an awful lot of potential for rust and things like that to generally have degraded the metal and worn it away over time. So some of the boats that I was looking at had been replated and some of the boats hadn't been replated. And all that replating is, or overplating as it's sometimes called, is basically somebody comes along and welds some new steel over the hull from above the waterline and then down to wherever it's deemed necessary. Sometimes the entire boat will have been replated and sometimes it'll just be the worst patches of um, rusting and pitting on the metal. Uh, Tilly herself had been replated and I felt that a year old uh, boat inspection certificate saying that the hull was in generally good condition was good enough for me personally at the time and because I was impatient I just wanted to get the boat and well start living on board basically but looking back at it now I really do think that if I ever did get another boat I would definitely pay to have a independent survey carried out. Now having a proper out of the water boat inspection is probably going to set you back £500 at the absolute minimum but for me personally whereas some people say if you have it inspected and decide not to go for that boat it's an awful lot of money to have wasted but I look at it like this if you are looking at a boat think ah oh, yeah let's just get it buy it only to discover that there's serious problems below the waterline you're then looking at potentially a few thousand pounds of repairs and work to be done whereas if you discover at the cost of 500 pound plus to yourself that you don't want to go anywhere near that boat that's ultimately going to be a net saving despite how much it costs you for the survey so i would definitely say now personally looking back I would definitely advise other people to have a survey done, even just for peace of mind. Um, another thing that is very important is obviously, well, making sure that the engine is all good. Now, I would say at the very least you want somebody to start the engine up for you and just run it in neutral for a few minutes. In fact, why? I was going to demonstrate the engine just then, but I think we've just gathered it's a little bit windy for that sort of stuff. Um, but I would say at least if you get somebody to demonstrate it and run it in neutral for a few minutes, you know that it definitely starts and is in some degree of working order. Obviously, if you know anybody who knows a bit about engines, then, well, they're always going to be handy to come and take a look at things. Um, I'd say on the point of view of the outside of the boat, for me personally at least, the hull and the engine were the two most important things. So things like paintwork and stuff like that on the top of the boat aren't that big of a deal to me because it's non-vital um, elements. Uh, painting the hull black though is something that's also something you should uh, keep in mind. 
Uh, some people say it should be done every year, some people say it should be done every two years, some people leave it even longer. And basically, if you're looking at a boat and think, hmm, this is probably going to need the whole painting in a couple of months, then that's something that's probably going to set you back five, six, maybe a few hundred quid more than that. And so that's something to bear in mind that you can think, hmm, I wonder if I can use that as a bargaining tool to get a bit knocked off the price. Um, but like I say, in terms of the exterior of the boat, those are my top priorities. Hull, definitely. Engine, second. And then things like black in the paint, uh, black in the hull, and other general things that obviously from boat to boat there might be different considerations. Um, another thing that might be a good bargaining tool for you, just a little, a little tip here. Um, check when the boat license is up as if that is going to come up in the next, I don't know, two or three months after you buy in the boat, then on a boat like Tilly, the boat licence is about £550 a year, and on a bigger vessel it can be over a grand. So that's something that, if you're thinking of spending an awful lot of money on a boat, and then thinking, hang on, I'm going to have to spend another grand on a boat licence as soon as I've bought it, then that's another thing that I would certainly, if I was in your situation, try and use as a bargaining tool on the price. But it might not work, but it's always worth a go, I say. <laughs> so, money saving tips aside there, I'd say on the inside of the boat, the key things that you're looking for are going to be very similar to if you were buying a house. So that's things like, is there any damp? Uh, do things like the taps and that all work? And obviously the cooker and... Uh, so a lot of boats will have a fireplace like this. Is the chimney insecurely and just general bits and pieces like that. Like the sort of standard things that you want to check everything's in good condition and all that. I definitely say on a boat check for damp about the place. And when I bought Tilly I didn't realise until about a week after I'd bought it that this corner, um, as I bought it, they had all built in um, seats and all sorts here. But this corner was very damp. However, now I seem to have solved that problem and, well, it's completely different to how it was when I bought it. Certainly feels safe enough to keep me lovely telescoping the, the corner there and obviously the cold, just in case it gets a bit chilly. Um, so, yeah, like I say, it's things like that on the inside of the boat that you want to be looking out for, as well as, say, well, the standard things, like I say, really. Stuff like the boiler and, well, taps once again, just making sure that it's all going to run and work just how it should. Um, something I would say on boats in particular, uh, especially the older boats, there's tend to be a little bit of DIY sort of plumbing goes on. I mean, on some of the boats I looked at, there's a few random interesting little bits of work that had gone on. And for example, this is me, a little shower head, and as it comes down, you can see that that of all the types of tap in the world, that is just acts as a normal hot water tap to go to the shower. So it's things like that that you particularly want to keep an eye on. And well, like I say, if you run the taps and just check that everything drains properly and everything works properly, it isn't going to be spilling all over the floor. I suppose to sum it all up, my absolute priority was, and still would be if I was buying another boat now, the condition of the hull, knowing that that's uh, safe and sound, and then, like I say, something like the engine is obviously a big part of being able to actually move the boat without dragging it along with a rope, and then anything exterior um, above the waterline, then I'd say would be secondary to those first two, and then when it comes to the inside, just general common sense really, I mean, are the taps okay and all that sort of stuff? And ultimately, it comes down to, are you 100% that you want to make an offer on this boat? Uh, like I say, check for things that could work in your favour, like is the boat licence up soon? Does it need blacking? And anything like that that you think might give you a little edge in being able to get a sneaky offer in and maybe a lower price accepted. I mean, on Tilly, I um, offered, it was up for 12, I offered 10 and we settled on 11 grand. So a thousand saved is certainly, well, it's a thousand in the right direction. Um, I suppose really, any more questions that you can think of and anything that I haven't covered in this very random video, I apologise, it's not what I expected with the wind and all that chaos going on. Um, any questions at all, Leave them in the comments, I'll get back to you. Maybe um, do another video in some better weather conditions where I can show you stuff properly. 
and well hopefully hopefully I'll see you around soon on the canal until the next time make sure you check out my other videos for a load more narrowboat stuff make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and if you could it would be a great help if you would like the Facebook page thanks very much for watching and I'll see you around soon farewell